प्लानिंग क्लास सिक्स ऑफ आई एस ओ फोर्टी फाइव थाउजेंड वन टू थाउजेंड एटीन हाई फ्रेंड्स आई वेलकम यू ऑल इन दिस एक्साइटिंग बाई टी एन वी अकेडमी टूडे इन दिस सेशन वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट क्लास सिक्स ऑफ आई एस ओ फोर्टी फाइव थाउजेंड वन टू थाउजेंड एटीन विच टॉक्स अबाउट प्लानिंग सो लेट्स गेट गोइंग एंड स्टार्ट आवर डिस्कशन let me explain you that what we will be covering in this session clause 6 of iso 45001 2018 has two sub clauses sub clause 6.1 and sub clause 6.2 both these sub clauses has several sub clauses within themselves in this session we will be discussing the first sub clause that is sub clause 6.1 and its requirements now let us understand about the internal references taken by clause 6 and sub clause 6.1 as far as clause 6 and sub clause 6.1 are concerned they do not take any reference from any of the clause within the standard but sub clause 6.1 which has another sub clause that is 6.1.1 which we will be discussing in this session takes reference from clause 4.1 and 6.1.4 hence for understanding the requirements of sub clause 6.1 one should have a fair idea about the requirements described in these clauses also they take reference from annex a which is defined within the standard annex a defines the list of terms and their meaning used within the standard under several clauses so that there is no misinterpretation of any of the term now let me tell you what are the take away from this session at the end of this session you will be able to understand the basic concept of planning planning in terms of iso 45001 2018 how an organization can identify risks and opportunities what actions an organization is supposed to take in order to cater these identified risks how the organization can plan to work on the opportunities identified so let's start our discussion with a brief introduction of clause 6 and the basic concept of planning clause 6 of iso 45001 2018 typically talks about planning done by an organization to address the risks involved in occupational health and safety it also states the fact that during the process of identifying risks and dealing with them the organization can identify certain opportunities which will help them to eradicate and nullify these risks in future and to make their overall process better and efficient but before we move forward and discuss the concepts of clause 6 of iso 45001 2018 let us first understand what planning is in simple words planning can be defined as the process of deciding in advance that what is to be done in future planning involves the determination of goals as well as the activities and resources that are required to achieve these established goals should identify the areas which can be the main contributors of risks for occupational health and safety management system should plan the activities that will be required to curb these identified risks should plan for resources that will be required and who has the expertise of dealing with these identified risks should identify the opportunities out of these risks to enhance the capability of occupational health and safety management system if an organization has planned for all these factors and has the process of implementing this planning then surely its occupational health 
एंड सेफ्टी मैनेजमेंट सिस्टम विल अचीव इट्स इंटेंडेड आउटकम्स विच इज अनदर रिक्वायरमेंट ऑफ क्लॉज सिक्स पॉइंट वन ऑफ आई एस ओ फोर्टी फाइव थाउजेंड वन टू थाउजेंड एटीन नाउ लेटस मूव है रिक्वायरमेंट ऑफ क्लॉज सिक्स पॉइंट वन एंड सिक्स पॉइंट वन पॉइंट वन रिस्पेक्टिवली इन डिटेल द क्लॉज सिक्स पॉइंट वन ऑफ आई एस ओ फोर्टी फाइव थाउजेंड An organization should prepare a plan for addressing risks identified and working on the opportunities identified from the process. To fulfill this requirement, the whole process has been stated in sub clause 6.1.1, which states that when planning for the occupational health and safety management system, the organization shall consider the issues referred to in. Clause 4.1, context, the requirements referred to in clause 4.2, interested parties, and clause 4.3, the scope of its occupational health and safety management system, and determine the risks and opportunities that need to be addressed. Two, point one, give assurance that the occupational health and safety management system can achieve. its intended outcomes point 2 prevent or reduce undesired effects point 3 achieve continual improvement when determining the risk and opportunities for the occupational health and safety management system and its intended outcomes that need to be addressed the organization shall take into account hazards c 6.1.2.1 Occupational health and safety risks and other risks. C 6.1.2.2. Occupational health and safety opportunities and other opportunities. C 6.1.2.3. Legal requirements and other requirements. C 6.1.3. The organization in its planning process or processes shall determine and assess. the risks and opportunities that are relevant to the intended outcomes of the occupational health and safety management system associated with changes in the organization its processes or the occupational health and safety management system in the case of planning changes permanent or temporary this assessment shall be undertaken before the change is implemented c 8.1.3 planning is not a single event but an ongoing process anticipating changing circumstances and continually determining risks and opportunities both for the workers and for the occupational health and safety management system undesired effects can include work related injury and ill health non compliance with legal requirements and other requirements or damage to reputation planning considers the relationships and interactions between the activities and requirements for the management system as a whole occupational health and safety opportunities address the identification of hazards how they are communicated and the analysis and mitigation of known hazards other opportunities address system improvement strategies examples of opportunities to improve occupational health and safety performance examples of integrating occupational health and safety requirements at the earliest stage in the life cycle of facilities equipment process planning for facilities relocation process redesign or replacement of machinery and plant integrating occupational health and safety requirements at the earliest stage of planning for facilities relocation process redesign or replacement of machinery and plant using new technologies to improve occupational health and safety performance improving the occupational health and safety culture such as by extending competence related to occupational health and safety beyond requirements 
or encouraging workers to report incidents in a timely manner. Improving the visibility of top management's support for the occupational health and safety management system. Enhancing the incident investigation process or processes. Improving the process or processes for worker consultation and participation. Benchmarking, including consideration of both the organization's own past performance and that of other organizations. Collaborating in forums that focus on topics dealing with occupational health and safety. Risk and opportunity must be considered with respect to the elements described in clause 4.1, 4.2 and 4.3 as well as legal and regulatory issues and the organization's occupational health and safety hazards themselves. This outcome needs to ensure that the occupational health and safety management system can meet its intended outcomes and objectives. That any external factors that may affect performance are avoided and that continual improvement can be achieved. In terms of emergency situations, the organization is required to determine any situations that may occur and have resulted in occupational health and safety risks. Again, it is vital that documented information is retained concerning the risks and opportunities considered and addressed in the planning phase in order to satisfy the terms of the clause. Planning is an integral part of all elements of an occupational health and safety management system. Effective planning is concerned with prevention by identifying, eliminating and controlling hazards and risks. This is particularly important when dealing with health risks, which might only become apparent after a long gestation period. Planning should be a collaborative effort involving personnel throughout the organization. This cooperation is eminently suitable for demonstrating and gaining commitment to continual improvement and promoting a positive health and safety culture throughout the organization. Planning for the occupational health and safety management system is an ongoing process and is undertaken in order to determine the risks that can affect the occupational health and safety performance of the organization. To identify opportunities to improve the occupational health and safety performance and the occupational health and safety management system. When planning for the occupational health and safety management system, the organization should take into account the following. The organization and its context. The needs and expectations of workers and other interested parties. The scope of the occupational health and safety management system. Planning should be proportionate to the level of risk identified. While the organization should consider all potential risks to its occupational health and safety performance, it should focus on those hazards which are most likely to occur and or have the greatest impact. The company should concentrate on those opportunities that can realistically be acted upon, with priority given to those that are most likely to improve performance. Examples of opportunities to improve occupational health and safety performance include the following. Identification of hazards, how they are communicated, analyzed and controlled. Enhancing the inspection and auditing functions. Introduction of job safety analysis and task related assessments. Modification of work processes, including the alleviation of monotonous and repetitive work. Implementation of permit to work processes. Incident or non-conformity investigations and corrective actions. Implementation of ergonomic and other injury prevention related assessments. Integration of 
occupational health and safety considerations at the earliest stage in the design life cycle of plant and equipment. Integration of occupational health and safety considerations at the earliest stage in planning for facilities relocation and or process redesign. Introduction of new technology, improvement of the occupational health and safety culture of the organization. Enhancing the visibility of top management's support for the occupational health and safety management system. Enhancing the incident investigation process. Improving worker consultation and participation. Benchmarking of the organization's occupational health and safety performance against that of other organizations. Collaborating in forums that review issues relating to occupational health and safety. The organization must maintain documented information on risk and opportunities. The process and actions needed to determine and address its risks and opportunities to the extent necessary to have confidence that they are carried out as planned. Friends, I hope you are clear with the requirements of Clause 6.1 of ISO 45001-2018. Let us move forward and discuss the other important components of this session. So now, we will learn about the mandatory documents that an organization has to maintain while meeting the requirements of Clause 6.1.1. As far as Clause 6.1.1 of ISO 45001-2018 is concerned, it demands that an organization must keep documented information on the identified risks and opportunities through a risk register. Also, it demands that the organization should keep documented information on the actions it has taken to address risks and opportunities identified. Now, let us practice writing non-conformity for clause 6.1.1 through a sample non-conformity report described through AFAR 4. And last, but not the least, let us understand the common mistakes which auditors do while performing audit under the clause 6.1.1 of ISO 45001-2018. Mistake number one, auditors ask irrelevant questions for the organization which does not relate with the organization to be audited. Mistake number two, sometime auditors start thinking for the option while auditor need to understand the client process and to decide if the client can achieve the result of the MSS through their own process. Mistake number three, auditors start consulting activities. Mistake number four, auditor start expecting document and records in clause where this may not be mandatory requirement. Mistake number five, Auditor start asking for documents that are not relevant to the requirements of the clause or standard. For example, GST registration, FSSAI registration, etc. Dear friends, we have now come to the conclusion of this training session. See you soon with an exciting new topic. Till then, goodbye.